This time we are going to calculate similarity scores in Python and we'll try to do it uh, from scratch as much as possible but we are going to use the NumPy library just to make the computations faster. So the first similarity score we are going to ca uh, calculate is the cosine similarity and if you remember from the previous video Cosine similarity is just when you think of two items as two vectors in a space and then you just calculate the cosine or the angle between these two vectors. So as you see here I'm, I'm importing NumPy and I am creating two items represented by a NumPy array and each item has four different ratings. So uh, item one has the ratings five, two, eight, eight, and uh, a similar format is uh, applies to item number two. And what we are going to do with these, because these arrays can be considered vectors in a space, as I mentioned earlier, and we are going to calculate the dot product between these two items. And I'm not going over what a dot product is if you don't know already. We are just going to get this uh, uh, computed and then we are going to calculate the norm for each of these items vectors. So, and if you don't know the norm for a vector is the magnitude or you could say it's the length of the vector. And to get the cosine of the angle between them, we take the dot product and divide it by the product of uh, both items' norms. And we are just going to print it out here. And the cosine is uh, uh, 0.96 roughly, which means it's they are pretty similar, but not completely similar. And the cosine, if you remember from tree class, it will go from one to minus one. One is the maximum value, which means they are completely similar. And minus one is the uh, most uh, opposite value, which means the items are as far apart in direction as you could be. And uh, this computation here we did by hand, however you can use a uh, popular uh, Python library to compute this in just one line. From SciPy we are importing a class called Spatial and this Spatial uh, class contains a cosine method just for computing the cosine between two vectors, the cosine distance. So if we go ahead and uh, run this code block again, you will see that the output is exactly the same as the previous example, but it's just a more concise uh, if you choose to do it in some more serious application later on. And after that, we are going to calculate the adjusted cosine similarity and it's completely, it's almost completely the same as cosine similarity. In this example, we are going to take into account the fact that different users have different standards for how to rate an item. So you, for example, may be really strict in whether you give an item a 10 out of 10 or not. You only give a product a 10 in the case it's the best product you have ever bought, whereas someone else who has rated a product may just give a product 10 out of 10 if it just lived up to their expectations. So this makes the data, the rating data, kind of unreliable if we don't do anything about it. So what adjusted cosine does is that we calculate the mean rating for each user. And then we are going to subtract this mean rating from e for each user from each of their ratings. So we kind of center 
each user's rating. So if it's if a user gives a rating above their me, mean rating, the value will be positive. And if it's below their mean rating, the value will be negative. So this line here, we are just, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just creating a matrix from these items here. And then I'm just taking the mean values from the uh, vertical axis. So I'm computing the mean for each column, which is in this case, each user. And then I'm just subtracting it from the same column, which can be seen here. We are calculating the mean for each column here, and then we are subtracting the mean from each column here for each item's ratings. And then we are just kept computing the cosine as we did before. And in this case, the uh, similarity is uh, pretty unsimilar as you can see here, because it's a negative value. If you remember, the cosine goes from minus one to one. And uh, as you can see here, it's item number two is basically twos and threes. Item number two is twos and nine. And item number three is uh, just zeros. And I'm um, supposing that it's the nine in item number two that makes it so dissimilar from item number one. So I'm just going to change this to a two. And I'm supposing the similarity now will be something slightly below point uh, 95 maybe uh, with a positive sign. Yeah, okay, so it's uh, 0.83, which is kind of close to what I was guessing, but it seems to be working all right. So let's move ahead to the next similarity metric, which is the mean squared deviation. And it's really similar. Uh, it's really simple as well. We are just taking the two item vectors and subtracting them from each other to get the difference. And then we square this difference, which means let's say we have, as you can see here, if we subtract these vectors from each other, this becomes zero, this becomes uh, zero, 2 minus 2, this becomes uh, 1, 8 minus 7, and this becomes 0. And then we are just computing the mean. Uh, no, <laughs> we are squaring this first, so uh, uh, zeros and 1 squared are the same, so it won't change, and then we are going to get the mean of the difference. So what we're going to do is we are adding these up and that just becomes uh, one. And then we are dividing it by the uh, length of these arrays. So one, two, three, four, which is uh, point 0.2. Let's see point 0.225. Um, so let's go ahead and run this code again to make sure it's uh, correct. Yes, it is. So let's go ahead and go for the last similarity rating we are com going to compute today. And it's the Jacquard similarity. And the Jacquard similarity is quite different from the other examples we did before, because when you compute the Jacquard similarity, you don't take into account a user's rating of an item. You take into account whether a user has rated an item or not. And this kind of, if you want to use this metric, it kind of depends on what your ratings actually are. For example, the most intuitive way of thinking of a rating is just uh, users just giving a product in a store 
zero to five stars. However, in the real world, you may possibly see more implicit ratings where you track whether a user has seen an item or not, whether a user has bought an item or not. And these are kind of more like uh, binary ratings where you don't supply it in a zero to five stars format. You just uh, set it to true or false, which can be encoded as zero or one. And it kind of depends on how you choose to do it uh, with your data set and with your uh, platform and what, what have you. But in this case, we are just going to think of it as users who have bought an item. And as you can see here, item one has been bought by the user one, two, five, six, and seven. And item two has been bought by the user two, three, four, and six. And the way we are going to compute this Jacquard similarity is, uh, is by counting the number of users that are contained in both sets. And then we are going to divide it by the total number of users. So let's say we have 10 users and only two users both bought both uh, item one and two. In that case, we are going to divide two by 10. So let's go ahead and to this line, total number of users. And I'm just going to concatenate these two lists. So it's, it just becomes one big list. Uh, and then, then I'm transforming this list into a set. And set in Python is a object which only has unique values. If you have user one and you add it to the set, it will be added when, but when you add it once again, nothing will happen because it only contains unique values. So user one will only occur once in the set, for example. And then I'm just uh, getting the length of this set. Uh, and that's the way we are going to compute the total number of users, unique users. And then I'm just going to find out the number of shared users between these two items. And this is done by iterating over item one's users, the users that bought item one. And I'm controlling for each user if they are also in the list for item two. So user one doesn't seem to be in the item two, user two does seem to be in item two and so forth. And if they are shared between both items, I'm just incrementing this shared users. And I'm uh, printing it out here. So it seems to be two users that bought both items. And I'm going ahead and just printing out the total number of users as well uh, to uh, see that it's actually seven. So we have seven total number of users and two users that are shared between both items. And what we're doing next is just dividing the number of shared users with the total number of users. So in this case, it will be two divided by seven. And to get the final Jacquard score, we are just multiplying this fraction with a hundred to get this uh, percentage. And let's print it out, uh, 28.5, which seems to be reasonable. This is uh, roughly the same as uh, a third, which uh, makes sense. So this was a quick uh, walkthrough of how to compute these um, similarity scores. In the next video, we are going to 
implement a basic kind of proof of concept of item-based collaborative filtering in Python. And we are trying to do it as much on our own as possible. And in the video after that, we are going to make use of a library which makes it all much easier and speeds up uh, your work. So uh, make sure to keep watching the playlist to see how it's done. And you can also find this uh, notebook in the description below. I'm doing this on Google Collaboratory, which is basically this free platform where, where you can uh, create your own Python notebooks and perform the execution of the program on Google's own servers, which is really handy if you need some powerful uh, hardware, but you don't have it on your own if you want to code on your laptop, for example. So I recommend you to check it out at least. So I'll see you next time and bye.